I've just been getting skunked. The last four days, I've traveled hours and hours and hours worth of driving, miles and miles on the truck. Just hasn't been happening. I need to just put something in my boat for me. So we're going out to a spot that is supposed to have some really big fish. I'm not gonna get my hopes up. We woke up early today. We're getting kind of a late start because it rained all morning, but we're gonna have like post rain weather. So I think, I think it's gonna be good. It's gonna be all right. I'm gonna try and target these fish to the best of my ability. And hopefully we get a big one. So good morning to you, even though you're probably not watching this video in the morning. Welcome back. It's good to see your face and uh, let's go fishing. We made it. We made it a pretty reasonable time. 8.30. I'll take it. Got the girlfriend with me again today. She's either going to be doing homework or catching bass with me. I don't know what you're going to do. What are you going to do today? You going to homework or catching bass? You're going to do both? No, I'm multitask, eh? So again, I've never actually fished this particular body of water. This lake is an all electric lake, so it's very tough to cover a lot of water because I pretty much can only mob around with a trolling motor. I see shad everywhere. There is bait literally everywhere. So I'm gonna start by throwing just like a spinner bait, throw some moving baits. We got that overcast weather. We got a little bit of wind. Chatter bait, spinner baits. I think that's what I'm gonna start with. Try and cover water since I've never fished here before. There's quite a bit of down timber. So if the moving baits do not really do anything for me, we'll start flipping a jig or bandito bugger or something like that. So. Let's go over to the GoPro and uh, just try to get a fish in the boat. So I'm gonna start with the Guggen Squad spinner bait. Typically what I would do is I'd fish this with a trailer on it, but today I'm gonna take the trailer hook off and I'm gonna pull out the Exo Swim. I got a 3.25 inch here. These are great for trailers. They're like the perfect minute paddle tail. They're also good for just fishing as is, but I like this size specifically for tipping my swim jigs, my chatter baits, and my spinner baits. I think we're gonna go through this bridge. I feel like it's not often fished, so we're gonna try and send it through there. I didn't actually think I was, this is insane. Oh my God. We literally just barely fit. It's awesome. <laughs> oh my gosh. We made it. These bass gotta be going in on these bait fish balls. I don't know if you guys could see that on my GoPro, but. Look at it, they're schooling. They're schooling with my spinner bait. Can you, I'm gonna try and cast into it so you guys can see. Look at this, ready? Watch. And bring them right to me. It's crazy. I wish I had a map of this lake so I could look at like transition areas and you know like big flats and stuff like that to try and find where these bass are moving around at. But I don't know. I feel like I gotta flip this with a bandito bug right here. I think I'm going to. This looks too juicy. Off the juice, Bandito got me catching. See, there's, there's fish cream in those bait balls. You see it out there? Well, you guys can't. I'm talking to my girlfriend more or less, but the, you know there's so much bait when you can see the seagulls flying around. Like, I can't believe the shad push right now. It's insane. I'm seeing a lot of fish on this graph. I'm kind of feeling like they're like kind of suspended. So I'm wondering, I don't know if they're bass or not, but I kind of want to see, maybe they'll hit a jerk bait. I don't know if those are bait balls. I, don't really know. I think they might be bait balls. Yeah, they're kind of big. I think they're bait balls. There we go. There we go. There we go. I knew we were in the right spot. Hey, that's what I like to see. That is what I like to see. Whoo, the skunk is broken and a plan comes together. There we go. 
That feels so good. Little guy, but it's a fish. I had a feeling I'm, I'm on a transition point where water's really deep behind me. It's like 15, 16 foot. And it comes gradually up to just this huge flat that I think would be ideal for spawning. I don't know this lake well, but we got just a nice sandy, rocky bottom all up over here. You got some lily pads, got a lot of cover. So I just, ah, I got a bait everywhere. I was like, there's gotta be fish up in here. Threw it in the shore right off that log. Got me the first large mouth of the day, okay. That just felt so good because it's been a it's been a long four or five days that I've been out here almost every day getting skunked. Spinner bait with the exo swim on it. Oh, that felt good to actually feel a bite. Hopefully that wasn't a fluke. Hopefully we're on a pattern here and maybe we can get into some more fish along the shoreline. Not a giant, but I'll take it. What I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna pick up a bandito bug, throw this in there just in case I can pick off a fish just chilling on some cover. You know, the odds of a fish actually being on a bed up here is very slim right now, but with the water temperatures being like 57 degrees, you get a couple warm fronts through, that water will warm up. And a lot of times, you know, when it cools down, those fish will transition. But if they are up there fanning around, it's not bad to try and get you know, like a craw or something in there. I'm gonna pick up a jerk bait, try that. And then we're gonna go back under that bridge and I think we're really gonna pound some cover. Because if that's a big cove up there, there ought to be fish staging up in there. Although there's a ton of pressure. Oh, you see that right in front of the boat on the jerk bait. That was awesome. That's a better one. Just T-bone that thing in front of the boat. Oh, that was cool. That's about a two pounder right there. See how I switched my uh, presentation just like that. And he ate it, he followed it right up to the boat. You got schooling bait fish. I like to throw something that's a little bit bigger than what's schooling around. And uh, it paid off. Probably got to slow it down a bit. I almost missed him. He came in like a muskie on a figure eight. We're getting there. This reel needs some TLC, I'll tell you that. You guys hear this thing? When I cast, ugh, sounds nasty. The reason I picked up the jerk bait is there's just not as much grass. There's not as much cover over here. We're fishing at about seven foot and there's a little bit of suspended grass like way at the bottom and a patch here and there. But for the most part, I'm assuming these fish are just eating that those big bait balls that are kind of just above those weeds. So what I'm doing is I'm fishing a jerk bait. It allows me to just cover that water column really nicely. Again, I'm fishing essentially a bridge. I look at it almost kind of like how I would fish an area around a dam, but uh, I feel 10 times more confident fishing a suspending jerk bait that allows me to pop, pop and pause rather than just covering a ton of water with the spinner bait. Now the reason I'm fishing the spinner bait in all those other areas is because you got a ton of trees and logs, you got weeds, you got a whole bunch of things you can kind of bounce that spinner bait off of. And uh, it makes a difference, it really does. So we have big bait balls here, it's all shad from what I can see. And guys, I really don't have any crazy grass or anything. I have like a really tiny garment on this John boat. Um, that essentially shows me weed lines and depths and water temperatures and uh, yeah, that's all you need I guess you don't need any kind of crazy technology to get out here and do this But uh, I just try to think very broad when it comes to doing what I do and uh, that Switching over to the jerk bait produced a fish within the first couple of casts so I'm just gonna work this whole area with this jerk bait a little bit. The jerk bait I'm throwing. I actually got this in a mystery tackle box. I believe it's a Janko of some sort. And uh, yeah, great jerk bait. Pretty much a shad color with the chartreuse line on it. And uh, I'm just gonna work this jerk bait a little bit. And just a lot of pop, pop, pause. Let that bait sit there. Let it sit in the strike zone just a little bit longer and those fish cream it. I mean, it got me a bigger bass too. It's a little bit better fish than the last one, so. That's what I'm doing here. 
All right, we're gonna go back to the spinner bait, try and bounce this thing around cover. Oh man, I've been getting my butt whooped. I wouldn't say I had a bad day for being on a pressured body of water, but spring has just been tough for bass fishing. It's been really tough. I feel like the water temperatures have been kind of bipolar, which has kind of caused the fish to act up. I think we just got a late start to things. We haven't got much rain this year. We haven't got a ton of warm weather yet. So I don't think a good push of fish has quite moved up shallow just yet. And if they have, then maybe I just have bad luck. So I'm not giving up. We're gonna be doing a ton of fishing on this new boat. We're gonna be exploring almost new lakes every single week since I built this boat. I mean, that is the reason that I built this boat. So expect to see a lot of fishing in this little bass boat here. I really wanted to get out there and get on a good bite, but it was tough. I got two little ones and we learned a little bit. I didn't get skunked, so that's good, but hey, what are you gonna do? So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you're liking the little adventures on the boat. I'm gonna do my best to get on some more fish so the videos are just a bit more entertaining for you guys here soon. But nevertheless, if you guys are new here, do me a favor and hit that subscribe button. Thank you guys so much for watching. And uh, hopefully we'll see you catching fish in the next one.